Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Today we're going to take a look at this ICOM 2730 ham radio transceiver that's on the bench behind me. Before I get started with the video, I just want to mention that this video is not intended to take the place of the ICOM instruction manual that comes with the radio. So the ICOM 2730 is a dual band ham radio transceiver with a detachable face, or maybe more accurately, detached face. In order to mount this to the radio, you have to buy a separate bracket from ICOM. Now, I didn't buy the attachment hardware to mount the faceplate to the radio because I'm going to mount this in my Chevy Suburban at some point. The faceplate's going to go somewhere on the dashboard and the radio body is going to go somewhere else in the vehicle. Now, because there's no bracket, ICOM does supply the cable to connect the faceplate to the radio body. ICOM also supplies the HM207 microphone with the radio, and we'll take a look at this in more detail later in the video. So I recommend taking a look at the instruction manual for the exact dimensions of the radio, but for now, I'm just going to give some quick estimates for size, just so you can kind of see it here on the screen. The width of the control head is about five and three quarters inches. The overall thickness of the head, including the tuning knob, is about an inch and a half. The overall height of the control head is just shy of two inches. Overall width of the radio body is about five and seven eighths inches. The depth of the radio, including the cooling fan on the back, is about seven inches. And the thickness of the radio body looks to be about an inch and a half. So looking at the radio body, there's a jack here for the control cable to go to the control head. And then over here, there's a microphone jack in case you want to plug the microphone directly into the radio body. So in the case on the sides and on the top, there's some vents for airflow. And then over here is where the internal speaker is mounted. On the back of the radio, the SO239 connector for the antenna is here. There's a fairly large cooling fan here, obviously. So over here are two 3.5 millimeter jacks for independent external speakers. And these also double as programming ports for the optional programming cable. And then over here is the power cord pigtail, and it comes standard with a T-style connector. ICOM also supplies a double fused power cord with a mating T connector. So the front of the control head obviously has all the radio controls and main display, which we'll talk about in depth later in the video. On the back of the control head, there's two threaded brass inserts that will accept metric 2.6 by five screws. Now these of course can be used with the various optional mounting brackets that ICOM sells to go along with this radio. Over here on the corner is the connection for the control cable to the radio body. And then over here on the side of the control head is another microphone jack. So again, the microphone can be plugged into either the control head or the radio body. The ICOM 2730 is an analog dual bander. There's no D-Star or other digital modes available in this radio. And this radio is set up so that it can receive two different frequencies at the same time. And the two frequencies can both be VHF, UHF, or one on VHF and one on UHF, like I show here. Now the radio also works on full duplex, and it can transmit on the VHF and receive on UHF at the same time, or vice versa. So the control panel is laid out so there are separate controls for each receiver. And the controls and functions here in the middle are common to both sides of the radio. Starting off in the top corners, a short press of the main button will toggle the main receiver between the two sides. So right now, the left side is set up as the main receiver. If I push this button, you can see the main icon lights up, and now it's over on this side. If I long press the button, I can activate the band feature. Now I can use the tuning dial to cycle between the 2 meter band, the 70 centimeter ham band, or the air band. This radio doesn't transmit on the air band, of course, but it does receive air band in AM mode. Short pressing this button allows me to tune the receiver by the megahertz register. Long pressing this button activates the scan function. Now I can use the tuning control to cycle between the scan modes. I'm going to choose ham, and then I'll short press the button again to start the scan. Short pressing the MR button toggles the radio between memory mode and weather band mode. If I want to go back to VFO mode, I short press the V slash megahertz button. Long pressing this button will put the radio into call channel mode. And now I can use the tuning dial to tune between the two calling channels, 0 and 1. To get back to memory mode, I can short press the MR button or back into VFO mode by short pressing the V slash megahertz button. So down here is a squelch knob, so I can turn the squelch all the way off and listen to the background static if I want to, or I can just increase that just enough to cut that out. 
This of course is the tuning dial and I can use this to tune around in VFO mode or in memory mode I can toggle between the memory channels. This here of course is the volume control. The orange switch is the on off switch and long pressing it turns the radio off or on. Short press mutes the audio. If I push the monitor button, regardless of whether the radio is in memory mode or VFO mode, with a repeater setup, the squelch is automatically turned off and the radio toggles to the offset frequency, either plus or minus depending on the dupe setting. If I'm on a memory channel or VFO setting that is simplex, pushing the monitor button just turns off the squelch and the frequency stays where it was. And short pressing it again goes back to normal. Long pressing the button allows the offset to be changed. The default is off. I can use the tuning control to cycle between duplex minus or duplex plus. Short pressing the button will register my selection. And now you can see the icon up here indicates the mode that I'm in. DUP by itself indicates a positive offset whereas DUP with a minus after it indicates a minus offset. Now the standard offset for two meters is 600 kilohertz and the standard offset for 70 centimeters is five megahertz. The radio will automatically use those defaults, but they can be overridden in the menu system if needed. Short pressing the low DTMF button will toggle the transmit power. When no icon is lit, the radio is in high power or 50 watts. Short pressing the button puts the radio into low power or five watts. A second short press puts the radio in medium or 15 watts and then another short press toggles back to high power or 50 watts. Long pressing this button puts the radio into the settings for DTMF tone setting. Now the various modes can be changed by using the tuning control. Short pressing the MW button puts the radio into memory programming mode. Now there's various things that can be done here and I'm going to talk about those in a separate video. So we're going to skip that for now by pushing the back arrow. However, one thing I will mention now is that if the radio is in VFO mode and the MW button is long pressed, whatever is here in the register will get written to the next available memory channel. Now you can see that that was just written to memory channel 7. So now if I go back to MR and tune to memory channel 7, you can see 14652 is there. In memory mode, short pressing the MW button allows some various things to be done. And again, I'll talk more about this in a separate video. Short pressing the menu button puts the radio into menu mode. And then I can use the tuning dial to toggle through all the various menu options that can be changed on this radio. I'm not gonna go through all of these, but I will do one just to show how menu navigation works. So I'm gonna use the tuning dial to toggle to the offset function. So down here along the bottom of the screen, there's now some navigation icons to indicate what each of these buttons now does in menu mode. This button cycles up through the menu tree and this button cycles down into the menu tree. This one is an enter button and this one is a clear button. So for example, I'm going to use the tuning dial to go up to the R tone setting. Now to go in and change this, I would push the right arrow key. Now I can use the tuning dial to choose the frequency that I want. Once I have the option that I want, I push the enter button to save it. Now if I want to get out of the menu tree, I use the left arrow to go back. And now I'm back in receive mode. So here's a look at the microphone that's included with the radio. It's the ICOM HM207. On the side, of course, it has a single push to talk switch. And on the back, instead of the traditional peg for a microphone holder, it's got a recess and a hook so that you can use sort of a standard off-the-shelf kitchen hook or anything like that to hang this microphone on. So there's a bunch of buttons on this microphone. The ones on the top are used for navigating and some of the programming functions in the radio. Short pressing this button toggles between VFO and memory mode. Long press locks the radio. Short pressing this button toggles the radio to the home channel and long pressing it toggles it into the call channel mode. Short pressing the top right button toggles the main receiver on the radio. And long pressing the button puts the radio in dual mode. The up and down arrows on the microphone can be used just like the tuning dial on the face of the radio. And then there's two buttons here that can be programmed to any function that you want. There's a clear button and an enter button here. Now, of course, there's a number pad for DTMF operation. And then the buttons along the right, in conjunction with the DTMF pad, 
can also be used to cycle the volume up or down or the squelch up or down. Now with the overhead light turned off, you should be able to see that the microphone keys are backlit, although they're backlit green instead of white to match the display of the radio. There's a lot more features and functions to this radio that I'm just not going to have time to cover in this video. I will make some more detailed videos, especially dealing with programming the radio and some of the scan modes that are available. But for now, I'm going to give you guys a snapshot of what this radio sounds like on receive, and then I'll hook it up to a dummy load and do a cross-room test to my SDR play, and we'll see what it sounds like on transmit. Uh, that's about it from here, George. Not much going on. They're just uh, trying to stay out of trouble, I guess. KB-10YB. Calling Westcon, calling Westcon, calling the Western Connecticut traffic net. Calling Westcon, calling Westcon. Western Connecticut traffic net meets nightly to pass messages into, out of, and throughout Connecticut. Okay, we are going to close George's Old Timers Net tonight. I would also like to thank the Central Mass Amateur Radio Association for the use of the repeater tonight's net. Delta 2541 descend now out of uh, 30 and then buoy at 24. I think the computer just beat you to it on our way to buoy at 24, Delta 2541. Almost got there. Okay, hey, 6 one since the pump's going, you can stand down Mansfield. Uh, we have to make the stretcher real quick and we'll be out in a minute. Copy, 601. 707, do you copy? You're released. Got it, thank you. This is a test of the ICOM 2730A on 70 centimeters. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. November 1, November Uniform Golf. This is a test of the ICOM 2730A on 2 meters. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. November 1, November Uniform Golf. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up. If you want to learn more about my channel, check the links in the description below. Thanks for watching.